Today, we take a small journey down a historic corridor in Hopewell Junction, New York. We'll walk and we'll talk. We'll discover some cool stuff. And we'll learn, first and foremost, that Rand McNally has nothing on my map making skills. Let's go. Yeah, that's what Mom always said. Okay, that's way down there in the creek. Here's looking back. And the original stone abutment. And it said to stay off the tracks. Well, technically what are tracks? Are tracks the rail? Are tracks the ties? Are tracks the catwalk? Don't step on the rail. Okay. I'd like to stay on the catwalk. Looks pretty sturdy. Yeah. Concrete capped with bluestone. It's a peaceful, serene spot right here. Just east of the Metro North Yard beyond Hopewell. Heading toward, looking for the remnants of the coal tipple footings. Let's go. Okay, got a little past the bridge, walk down this path, going down, 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 underneath the bridge, underneath the bridge, quite a nice rust spot right there, yeah, you couldn't even run a galloping goose over that safely, um, oh, what do we got here, we got a lot of graffiti, we've got some iron remnants here some iron remnants here and they were at one point connected to that concrete tie for serving some purpose we are underneath the double bridge yes yes that one the west side is gone still there wouldn't want to run over it the middle one is the walkway and that is the runnable usable side on the east let's go up over here i have you know we're walking in rock stone ballast i do see some coal and some slag from time to time really really nice neat uh, pile of stones over here we're in the backyards of some folks houses over there and <clears throat> Every now and then, you do find some old iron. Yep. Okay, with the bridge in the background, I came down along the creek, which, by the way, is a beautiful little peaceful spot. Come down here, smoke your cherry tobacco, and uh, pull a couple brookies out. And I'm walking up this trail. And we got a big old concrete footing or foundation. Ah, could this be the coal tipple? Could this have been part of the coal tipple? Could this have been a water tank footing? This is on the those artists if only they would do it for a living they'd make some money this could this is on the west side now there's one two three four big inch and a quarter bolts torched off with these two big solid iron also with four bolts each here and here uh, reinforced footings there, brick and concrete and stone. Yeah, this could have been. The road bed is right up there. So now we have to find out was the tipple, was the coal bridge uh, footings on this side or on the east side? Let's go on the east side directly across from this and find out. Well, you see it? 
Yep, an old telegraph pole complete with old Hemming Gray insulators and still quite a bit of wire on it. Right at the juncture um, of the bridge, just east of the bridge, I mean 50 feet past the bridge. And we are pretty much um, directly across from yeah, there's a piece of coal. We're pretty much across from those footings that we found with all that lovely colorful graffiti on it. And we do have what appears to be ruins, remnants of stonework. Uh, could have been reinforcement for the eastern side of the tipple but I do not see definitive evidence of it so I'm going to continue on east a little break in the fence behind this guy's backyard up and into the Duchess Rail Trail and I branched off over here just to give you another glimpse of yet another old telegraph pole yep they're still out here folks so in all my reference books, I've been told and read uh, about the coal tower that it is about a half mile east of Hopewell itself. And I don't think we're quite a half mile. Uh, you can see over my shoulder, uh, the yard back there. We are walking easterly toward Whaley Lake and just evidence yet farther along for those of you naysayers and doubters there is plenty of room for rail with trail okay another telegraph pole hmm. most of them are always devoid of the insulators these have all had the insulators on them so far people down here the kids down here must have behaved themselves Somebody made an arrow to indicate which way we should be going. Now back in my younger days, I would have grabbed this little six or seven or eight foot length of rail and thrown it up on my shoulders and carried it out. Not now. Somebody said, hey boys, let's place a big old chunk of granite there for weary travelers to sit on. Okay. Pieces of rail stuck in the ground, back to back. Must have been a signpost or something. Here's a cool and ingenious idea for a set of steps. A whole bunch of rail plates made into steps. Nice. All right, so we've walked um, continuously east. We're on the curved part of the track now. And I came upon this on the west side. Clearly was a platform for something. Modern day concrete, well modern day, uh, teens, 20s, 30s, kept stone. And on the other side is this massive, massive, Look at the curvatures and the grain on that rock. This is just totally awesome. This massive, massive stone cut. In fact, both sides, both sides are just so gorgeous. We're in a little glen here. Imagine the, the roar of the steam train and the horns blowing that they were approaching the Hopewell Yard in this glen right here. Must have been pretty awesome. Sign Tower. East of Hopewell. Probably denoting curve ahead uh, and or yard limits approaching. Continuing east. I've yet to come upon, besides that 
gigantic concrete footing. There was another one right there in the ground just past those footings. And there's a, another one right here. So, yeah. Oh, focused. Still continuing east from Hopewell. Uh, the telephone telegraph poles have morphed into some larger telephone poles. Um, telegraph, telephone. What's the difference, you say? Quite a difference. Telegraph came first. Dot, dot, dash, dash, ditto, ditto, ditto. Telephone came later. Alexander Green Bell. Still a lot of insulators on top of them. We're on top of a pretty big fill section here. And we're in the backyard to some folks here. Looky, looky. A well, double cap well, footings for a water tank right up above that platform this is a water station out here east east of Hopewell footings concrete pipe stanchions valve handle long gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten concrete footings. Oh, twelve. Typical watering platform. Yes, yes. Right on the curve. Here's some more. Could it have been? The watering station. What do you guys see down there? These are about 12 inch, 14 inch pipes, sand pipes that are way down in the ground. And they're standing on top of them. Heading back west towards Hopewell Junction and the depot. This is the yard limit sign post that was here. Uh, we are currently westbound. This is the old road bed that led, original stone wall. This is the road bed that led out to the water pumping station. On the south side of the tracks, I'm um, looking east back towards the pumping station. How awesome is this? Right now we're going to explain the coal pocket just east of Hopewell. Cameraman, follow the bouncing cane. So here we have the depot, the Hopewell depot. Here we have the line coming up from Beacon, coming through the center of town, crossing underneath the Route 82 overpass. Once it gets east of the overpass, it breaks off into a couple of different sidings. Several of them were sidings into the Brydane, currently Williams Lumber Yard. One was the main line, the second one was the main line. Right here is the Metro North Training Yard right now, currently. It continues east to the bridge that crosses the Fishkill Creek. Right now, there's one line, two lines, and the trail in the middle. So what I found was the concrete foundations 
from the old steam-powered water pump house. They would pump water from the Fishkill Creek into this steam-powered water pump. Then it would go through a series of piping along that roadway I showed you to the water house and the water pump and the standpipe at the water column at Trackside to the coal pocket. This was the coal pocket house and the water pump house. This was the coal pocket that extended over top of the tracks and was anchored on the west side, I'm sorry, on the east side to this large rock formation that I showed you in my photos and videos. This all was ripped up and destroyed and scrapped once steam gave way to diesel.